And this is the uh, shared space design that we came up for the main street of Wodonga. Uh, now we had certain constraints put on us that we worked with. These are bridges across a, 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 a river. But for the engineer, these are the most beautiful speed humps I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> so you can do things in a way that even though we Ha I am vehemently against traffic control devices. And yet in this case we're using a traffic control device but we're using it in a way that is different, that, that has some creativity to it. And uh, that's all folks. Um, I was, had to resign from Wodonga and here I am. <laughs> so over for you to questions. Good, good question. Um, did my work in Wodonga produce any significant measurable results on the ground as far as the shopping centre was concerned? Uh, I believe that that's going to take much longer than the less than two years that I was there. Um, and for the last 12 months, um, as you would guess from the headline, um, I was battling some significant internal opposition. However, and, and I, at one level, left feeling like I'd failed in that I didn't build that beautiful streetscape that I would like to have built. But I believe that what I left behind was a number of things. We trained merchants, we, uh, and, and there was a whole bunch of merchants who uh, had gone from just being in there, uh, retreating to their shop, to being much more engaged. One of them set up a fashion circuit where she got all the people who sold fashion to go onto the one brochure uh, and they refer customers to each other so that women from Albury now come over and will shop the circuit. Now that only just started as I, I was leaving and that was headed up by one of the merchants that we put through our training program. Um, but the other thing is that I think my time in, in Wodonga certainly lifted the, the glass ceiling of what people were considering possible for their town. Um, and I, I got absolutely unbelievable um, support in the papers and on the streets from people who just felt like their, their, their whole sense of what they could achieve with their life had been lifted through my example of what I'd been doing while I was, I was there. Did you have in Wodonga a sort of a collective of the businessmen and the local council on a representative committee that might have employed you to do that work? We've got a name for it here, Main Street, a Main Street committee? Uh, no, I was employed as a consultant by the council. Uh, there was a chamber of commerce that got money from the, uh, from the city. Um, I personally found the Chamber of Commerce was, was, was very blinkered uh, in that they were about essentials only shopping. In fact, one of the, they ended up opposing that plan, that they were part of the opposition. And on the basis that I was trying to create the most child-friendly street in the world, and they were saying, we cannot have a playground and a commerce strip all at the one time. It's either got to be a commerce strip or a playground. And, and so they were, they were very blinkered about that. But as I mentioned, we put uh, 10 merchants through a Unleash the Champion um, course, and a lot of those became great champions at the street level. So the city council never actually imposed a special rate on the businessmen there no. to pay for your upgrade? No. 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 Okay. Yep. Um, part of the difficulties that we faced uh, in Wodonga was um, and I, without going into the whole story, we, we fell into the big black hole of the financial uh, crash and so there was no money to do those works, but there were lots of other issues as well. Other questions? The example you've given, uh, Wodonga, is uh, a relatively small city in a, in a rural hinterland. Um, does the same approach, or, or do you have to modify the approach when you're working in a, a much bigger urban environment where <coughs> communities are closer together and sort of overlap? <coughs> that they're not so distinct as they are in, say, a rural setting. Does that make a difference yep. in your approach? So, does it make a difference whether you're in a, in, in a small rural town or in, in a large city? Um, this morning we went out and did a walk in a, uh, a shopping centre at um, St Heliers. 
Um, to me, it was no different than Wodonga. Um, so your city is composed of a number of similar challenges uh, that don't seem very dissimilar to me. Yes, to, to take Queen Street and do something with that, we are talking a different scale than what, what I'd be talking in Wodonga. But essentially, the issue is still the same. What is the mental image that people have of Queen Street? Do people see it as the civic heart of your city? You know, and, and it's about working with that. How do you go about changing that? And so it's, it's the same kind of challenge on a different scale and, and, and broken up into different areas. Another question? Um, yeah, one of the challenges we had that was owned by the State Highway Department because it was formerly the highway. Uh, they certainly were not going to allow us to reduce it to two lanes and break it up into rooms while ever they had control of it. Um, so we were in the process of negotiating a deal where they were going to hand it over. It didn't need to be, there was a, a bypass built past the town so it wasn't needed for that anymore. Uh, but certainly they wouldn't allow it uh, under their uh, regulation. Okay. The question is, if you choose to, I'll, I'll paraphrase it, if you choose to live below the glass ceiling that, that is being imposed, are you reinforcing that glass ceiling? Um, I would say yes, and I actually talked to some of the employees yesterday about ways that you can go about changing that, and, and you know, one of the things I'd love to do, I'm in the process of writing a book at the moment on creativity, and one of the key questions that got me started looking at that material over 10 years ago was, is there anything I could do to help bureaucracies become more creative? And there certainly is. There are lots of uh, institutional things and personal training things that can be done to make bureaucracies more, more creative. And one of the things in, in, in creativity is to learn or to, at every point, to understand whether you're going to play within the existing boundaries that have been created for you and be created within those boundaries or whether you're going to give the, the, the finger to the boundaries. Does that make sense? And I've always found that the greatest creative challenge is how do you take people who don't want to be on a journey on a journey? And I can give you example after example after example of where I have seduced bureaucrats, senior bureaucrats, into going on journeys that they never intended going on. And in the process, breaking the glass ceiling uh, along the way. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, certainly, uh, but you've got to choose at what times you do that and at what times you simply appear to be playing within the boundaries that you're given. And, and one of the keys to this is to understand that all of life is a game <coughs> including the work that you do. The only difference between a game and work is your mental attitude. What is work for an adult is often play for a child. Washing up. And if you start to understand that your work is a game, it's a very, it might be a very serious game, but it's a game, one of the great things that children do is that they make up the rules of the game to suit them at any point of the, of the process. And what we, what we often get tricked into doing is to play the game according to the rules that have been handed to us and never think about, hey, I'm a free agent. How do I change these rules? How do I move them in a different direction?